Hak ne veksa? Hak ne at last veks up lies there very feeble and drowsy, can hardly open his eyes. And we see that he cannot clearly see anything around him. All is blurred and unreal, out of focus and threatening. Hagne, where am I? I? I need to go home to Mama. Somebody stole me. I think it was a monster, not a man. At least he did not have any ordinary eyes. It had terrible black eyes, black as the darkest darkness. And it laughed and was terribly strong and all furry. Or perhaps it wore some mantle of fur. They were all of them monstrously strong as they dragged the huge logs from the shore as if they were withered straws. Of course they had horses too, but still they were all of them strong and ugly. I have sworn to find the thief. Now I know it's no man. They are monsters from the mountains. How can I ever find them again? Can I find them over here in the mountains? I have made a bow to expose them so they can be punished. Hagni tries to sit up, but is giddy and practically falls back on the pillow. Etta says, thou shalt have to recover, deadlingur, thou hast got fever. Hagni, how stupid I was. I went out to look for my knife in the middle of the night, and I had fever to make it all the more a stupid idea. Etta, or because thou hadst fever, deadlingur. Eh, hey, it was stupid, but this was to bring thee to the task of thy life. Inevitable are Erlog. Thou hadst to be stupid to find the greatest knowledge. Kesavadeva Shastri, friend of my great-grandfather Aue, named me Etta via Ausa to remind him of Etta via Asa, he said. Hagni seems not quite to get what Etta just said, actually does not understand any of it. He is too occupied with his woe of finding the culprit in Erkenvik. That stealing problem seems to be the root of all this stupid brawling between the families on the two farms. Edda, thou dost not remember thy former urther actions, but this is thy skuld to have come here to gain our ancient knowledge and preserve it, if that be thy wish. Note, Hogni is always vulnerable, never tough, not a tough guy type at all, and we sympathize with him in any situation. He is so innocent and helpless at times that his very presence calls for help and love and care, and he is the too trusting type. It's not always wise to trust everyone and everything. His wide open innocent blue eyes make us believe in him for good deeds, but he has to be more careful. Hugni, my name is not Detlinger, my name is Hugni. Edda, Hugni, good, the guardian and protector of men. I shall give thee some herb mixture, so that thou shalt recover quickly. So, as Urður Verdand and Skuld seem to have decided this to be thy Urlug, that is, to end up here in Queradalir, I shall teach thee all a knowledge. It shall be thy quest to preserve it, and have it secured for thousand of dark age years to come in Iceland. When thou recoverest, thou shalt return to Ernvík, a much wiser man. Kesvedeva Shastri gave me the name Etavi Ausa. She reminded him of Etavi Asa. I shall give thee the nickname Vithötur, reminding of Vida Arta, he who has knowledge as his goal. Compared to Sithötur, one of Odin's names, Sita Arta, who has perfection as a goal. Didst thou know? Arta is goal, not any hat. Dost thou understand how urður verðandi skuld work, Edda asks? Whatever we say, think, do, spreads waves, gungnir, which bounds into whatever in the way, and in due time return to where they got originated. Whatever one set forth returns to its origin. The course of action is unfathomable. Dost thou know? This is in Bhagavad Gita, later stolen by the Roman Empire, distorted to fit something called God capitalized. But Verdante has all the calculations unmistakably flawless between Urður and Skuld, even while we take our rest in Helia. Ooh.